Welcome to Real Hi-Fi Help. So let's have a look at Griffin Audio, the sound. And that's just taking my opinion into consideration. I also want to say that um, this isn't just my opinion, but like a collective of a lot of higher end audiophiles that I know. So this isn't just my opinion. This is like the collection of thoughts from from me and those individuals that I know. Um, and, and yeah, remember to check out second part of this video, which is included below. As you can see, 37 pages down here in case I've uh, cut that out with the video. Um, <clears throat> let's get into it. This is very exciting. So, <clears throat> Rank. This is one of the few brands that I would call a high class brand. That's a very, very, very rare thing to be able to say. A lot of audio companies will make one, two, three pieces of gear maybe in a, let's just say a 20, 40, 50 year old journey. And not a lot of uh, companies can, can really state the fact that they are a high end brand. So I, I, I'll give that to Griffin. I'll say that yes, Griffin Audio is a high-end brand together with the likes of yeah the ones that you're gonna see below so I've written some stuff I'm not gonna read it all up uh, you guys can just pause the video read the text this is just to enable uh, the video to be only about 10 20 minutes long so <clears throat> These are also what I would call high-end brands, okay? So for me personally, and a lot of people that I know, Audio Note UK is a clear number one. I get it, not all people have that opinion. I respect that. Um, a lot of people that I know also consider Spectral Audio a clear number two. Um, even a lot of people that I've spoken to that own uh, audio companies <laughs> that won't uh, that don't want me to to um, what, what do you call it um, what do you call it um, quote them for, for saying this they will behind the scenes say that spectral audio is probably the best transistor gear that they've heard or the best gear ever <clears throat> I get that I wouldn't say that a hell of a lot of people would say that Negra Audio is like third spot. But for me personally, I feel it belongs there. I also have some friends that totally disagree with me that have owned Negra Audio. But I also respect that. Um, these are three very, very different companies. So uh, yeah, not everybody's going to agree with me here. Condo, yeah, again, a lot of people are... Are, are kind of you know a lot of people want to see it as, as a number one brand or num number 20 or whatever i get that um i haven't heard enough condo to really be able to judge it uh, but what i've heard i would say that around a fourth place very good brand and then for me personally i would say that griffin audio is the fifth best brand in the world and I would say that on top of that, it is considered generally a helping type of sound. And I mean that in a positive way. So I feel that Griffin will work for a lot of different audiophiles. Typically because they, they solve a lot of problems with power. And I think it enables a lot of people to use a lot of different gear and a lot of different rooms where when you're looking at specialized equipment, uh, I call it specialized equipment, stuff like, I would say, audio notes at the, at the higher end of, of what, what they make, level three, four, five, spectral gear, and especially Negra gear, that is more finicky gear, I would call it, where I feel that there's a higher potential, but you have to be a certain type of user with a certain ability, 
who perhaps also gets a bit lucky to to kind of tune into that hidden hidden world of sound. That's just my opinion. Not all not all everybody's gonna feel like that. I respect that. Um, yeah, it's kind of a hard decision uh, for me personally. Placing Griffin and Dan Agostino on my on my top ten list because I feel that in in some aspects Dan Agostino uh, is is a better brand. In some aspects, Griffin is a better brand. So I'll keep it uh, relatively um, simple. I just feel that price wise. Um, I still feel that Griffin just gives a tiny bit more than Dan Diagostino. I feel that generally you have more of a helping type of sound where Dan Diagostino is more on the analytical sound, typically a bit more transparent, a bit more this and that detail. But I feel that Griffin just, mm, it's just easier to work with, you know? And I, and I feel that they they have consistently for many many years produced so much high quality gear, and they just keep on producing these crazy 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 uh, amps. Uh, the Mephisto being one of them, Atelier Evo, and all the newer top stuff, Apex. And I I, I haven't even heard a lot of the, um, the the top top stuff from from Griffin. But I just feel that overall, yeah, Griffin just has a slight edge uh, ahead of Dan Diagostino. But Dan Diagostino, my God, that is also amazing gear. Um, <clears throat> but of course, they're very different. Yeah, personally for me, YBA, Boomaster, all, all of these, these are kind of like my guess of what's what would be there. And of course, you guys can tell me in the comments what you guys prefer. So let's get into the positive, okay? There's a lot of positive. If you've seen some of these videos of me before, when I look at a lot of brands, there isn't like mm, a long, long list of positive things. So th this is a bit unusual. So I would say that generally with Griffin products, you have power, you have drive, you have control, you have thickness, clarity, transparency yeah dan agus the Agostino generally has a tiny bit more transparency so yeah but this is what i want to say i feel that with with griffin you finally have a transistor brand that feels as if it's true class a and it's pulling like a ridiculous amount of uh, watts per hour and I think that's one of the reasons why it's so much better than other gear. Just to give you a comparison, I remember my friend telling me with his uh, Macintosh MC 1.2 uh, monoblocks that they together only pull around 400 watts per hour. Now that that's a bit on, on the low side. I did not expect that, but it kind of explains a b watts how much how much power that they use compared to something like griffin um griffin i would say generally uses probably two to five times more power than i would say a lot of these uh, monoblocks that you see on the market and that that is a lot of power to to really pull, and it kind of makes sense that you have two power cords in some of their amps because of that. And um, yeah, lots of things you can read here about Griffin. Extra information here we have the minor sides. Um, not everybody's going to agree with me about that, but I feel that. It's important to mention you don't always hear about these minor sides. Um, I have a very good conclusion um, that you also can read. So, just so you guys don't get confused and, and think that I hate Griffin. No, no, it, it's one of the brands that I really, really love. I would love to own Griffin gear one day. And specifically, I would like to own the Diablo 300, specifically because of the built-in DAC module. I am not a believer in an external DAC. 
Yes, I believe that it can be potentially a lot better, but I feel that realistically, money-wise, you are so much better off with a high-quality product like Griffin Diablo 300 with a built-in DAC. And we're not just talking about a, a normal low-end DAC. This is actually a pretty decent DAC that, that's inside. And I feel that it's actually quite a bit better than the ones that you find in the Macintosh products and some a lot of other brands with their built-in DAC. Of course, that's kind of also reflected by the price. This is just crazy amount of money in my country. It costs as much as a middle-class car. But I would like to see brands do this more often. Have a pretty high-quality amp with a pretty high quality DAC. I don't like external DACs. Once you get into external DACs, I feel that you often lose so much potential that is so dependent on the power bar that you have, the power cables, the signal cables, the whole conversion process where it's not necessarily the same brand and it just gets more expensive and you just have to constantly, you know, go all in nuts to make a lot of these uh, external DACs work for you. Um, so the, this is kind of like my plea for Griffin and a lot of the other high-end brands out there. Come on, guys. Make more amps with built-in DACs. Okay? And this is especially targeted at Yamaha. Yamaha, for God's sake, you've made some fantastic amps that had built-in decks, but only on the lower levels. Like, what the hell? Why isn't it getting in on the higher-end products? Why are you leaving out the DAC? It's a big reason for why a lot of people aren't buying Yamaha or other brands, because they only have built-in DACs on the lower models. So, yeah, I would like to see, like, an Antillian Evo with a built-in DAC, a Mephisto. I tried the Mephisto, and that's just... I almost can't disagree with Jay from Jay's Audio Lab. That, that's just an amazing piece of, of gear. I would love to own a piece of gear like that. Absolutely love it. That would sound so great on such so many, I would say, mid-higher-end speakers to top-top speakers. Uh, that that's an absolute uh, beast that Mephisto um, yeah so don't tune away now I'm actually getting over to the better part of the video so in case you guys want your hi-fi problems solved look at my previous video here this is the quick index of that video here there are seven ebooks that I'm selling and now Yes, I have actually, since my last video, improved on this part here. So now, look at this. Now we have 285 videos slash chapters in this book. I have improved on it a lot, added a lot of uh, chapters. This is the introduction that you're looking at right now, okay? This is the, the intro. So that's the introduction of the book. And now we're getting over to, um, let me just see here. This is the index of the book. I'll, I'll be fast about this, okay? But here are the chapters. Here is what you're going to be reading about. This here, like I've written up here, this basically solves all hi-fi problems. You heard me, guys. Basically solves all hi-fi problems. This isn't just a book that where I'm just going to go like, all right, I just, just sell a lot of these books. I'm going to continue as long as I can to extend this book and cover all the problems that I have faced and that I know that other people are facing or have faced. And there will be reviews of gear solving all kinds of problems. This is basically basically the art of making good sound, okay? how to figure that out, all the tips, all the tricks, all the ways that you save money. It's here in this one book out of seven, okay? So check out that previous video to find out what that's gonna cost, how to get in contact with me. This 
is what we're looking at right now. So I'm going to be a bit fast scrolling through this so a lot of people don't lose interest. Okay, You can just pause the video if you feel that there's something that you're missing. These are the topics that I'm covering in this book. I go very deep. I go very wide in this book. Um, explain hi-fi from all different angles. Talk about all the stuff that nobody talks about. All the traps in hi-fi. If you've got questions about this and that aspect of hi-fi, this is basically the one book that's going to help you with that. Of course, there are going to be small other things that it perhaps won't cover. Then you just send me a mail. Typically, we then do a consultation to solve those problems. So, yeah, I'm just going to scroll down through the chapters here. A lot of interesting chapters. Um... And this is basically what you're looking at here, the philosophy of how to change sound so it gets better. All the traps that you have to basically uh, avoid or go through in order to evolve um, your own sound. <clears throat> There's also here in this book, I also cover stuff like how to make your own cables, why this thing sounds in, in this way with that thing um, why sometimes you feel something is better when it really isn't what to look out for like here for example it's a great chapter here on how to protect yourself from from scammers so they don't steal your money when you're going to look for you know typically gear that is a bit more expensive um, yeah and this is about the place here where I ended my previous video. So the, all of this stuff here and below is new, okay? So remember to check out that, that video that goes into the specifics of the video. They, there you can read the chapters. But don't you guys tune out. I will show you some of the free chapters here, okay? So don't tune out. So lots of interesting things. And I want to say that, especially with streaming, this book covers so much of that. Um, yeah. So remember, we have to get up to 285 chapters, I think it was. Um, uh, let me just go down here and this is by the way some new gear that I tested recently um, that was very interesting very interesting now I finally got to try the uh, hollow may DAC and the uh, the Cobra amp <clears throat> and let me just see Oh yeah, by the way, got this recently. That's actually a very, very good product. Very cheap. Uh, I wish that more more people would, would get this. I think I'm going to make a, a chapter specifically um, on this later, covering my own experience. This is just my, my friend's point of view. Because um, I've got more stuff to add to that. I just tried it a couple of days ago <clears throat> on my own system. Um, let me just see. Mm. Oh, that was also quite interesting, this chapter here. We're going to get into that. That's going to be interesting. And also, uh, recently discovered this here. That was also, like, that really opened me up to, like, wow, hearing a, another level that was hidden um, with my amplifier. Just figuring out 
exactly where I had to put those dampeners because they're not just dampeners, they're also RMI and RFI filters. Um, so remember, this basically solves most of your hi-fi problems. Let's get on to the, uh, the next part here. And that is now we have, uh, just do this, <clears throat> five free chapters for you, okay? Let me just see if I can push this down like that. Five free chapters for you. This is the first chapter here. This is my top 100 amplifier lists. And as you can see here, let me just go down. Just ignore that. That's just my phone ringing. And I'm gonna go down here and here. And almost done with the book. And right here, some other chapters. So <clears throat> we're pretty much at the end. You guys can just pause the video to figure out what's what. And uh, I'm just going to end it here. And if you guys want to get in contact with me, remember to send me uh, an email. And uh, free stuff is on the channel as always. So yeah, that's basically me covering this uh, video topic here. I hope that helps you guys. Peace out.